Hello, so today I'm going to share with you 10 things that you might be doing that are actually preventing you from developing your psychic abilities. And I'm going to share with you several things that you can do to change these things. So hold on, this is going to be good. Okay, so many people talk about different ways that you can develop your psychic abilities, but did you know that there are many things that you are doing every minute of every day that are actually preventing you from developing your psychic abilities? So that's what we're going to talk about today, and that's what we're getting into right now. Here are 10 of them, and they are in no particular order. Number one, fears. So many of us actually have fears about developing our psychic abilities, whether or not we are afraid to see psychic visions or we are afraid to hear the voices from spirit. So it's these fears that are preventing you from actually developing your psychic abilities. So the sooner that you figure out what those fears are and begin to face those fears, the sooner that you can begin to develop your psychic abilities. Abilities. Make sense? Number two, trust. Learning to trust your guidance and take action on that guidance is a huge part of developing your psychic abilities. If you are not trusting that guidance and taking action on that guidance, why do you expect that your guides would continue to give you that guidance? So by you trusting and taking action on that guidance, you are letting your guides know that you trust them. And so because of that, they will continue continue to give you guidance. Does that make sense? So if you're not trusting them, they're not going to give you what you're looking for. So put that trust out there and follow the guidance that they are giving you. Number three, practice. So often we want to develop our psychic abilities, but we don't put in the time, energy, and effort to do so. So it's just like building a muscle. If you are not taking that time to strengthen and build that muscle and develop it, then how do you expect it to get bigger and stronger? So this is the same with your psychic abilities. Take that time, practice, and develop your psychic abilities if you expect them to grow. Number four, quieting your mind. If you have an active monkey mind all of the time and you are filling up this mental space all of the time and not leaving room for guidance to come in, then how do you expect that guidance will come in? You need to meditate regularly and take the time to quiet your mind space so that you are making room for that guidance. Otherwise, how is that guidance going to show up? So, like I said, take the time to quiet your mind, meditate regularly, and make space for that guidance to occur. Number five, self-care. If we are not taking care of ourselves, body, mind, and spirit, how can we expect to channel those higher frequencies through ourselves, through our vessel? So it is so important to take care of ourselves, whether or not we are getting a good night's rest, or we are eating well, or we are exercising, or we are keeping our mental state healthy. All of these things are essential for our ability to channel higher energy energies through our vessel. So make sure that you are taking care of yourselves. And the more you do this, the easier it will be for you to channel those higher frequencies. Number six, low frequency. If you are constantly in a low frequency state, if you are full of doubt, fear, and negativity, and keeping yourself in that low frequency state, then how do you expect to channel higher frequencies? So you need to take time regularly to raise your vibratory state, whether or not it's through meditation or whatever, visualization, whatever you need to do to raise your frequency frequency, this is essential because think of it this way. If your vibratory state is down here and spirits is up here, then there's no way for you to communicate easily. You need to regularly move your vibratory state up to that higher state to as close to spirit as possible so that communication becomes easier. So take that time to get out of that low vibratory state and raise your vibration as frequently as you can. Number seven, ill 
will. Now, the universe does not take too kindly to us acting in a state of ill will towards others. Remember that everyone is a reflection of yourself, right? So when you are acting out with ill will towards others, you are actually acting out at ill will towards yourself as well as to the universe as a whole. And this is lowering your vibratory state. And remember what I just said about being in a low vibratory state. So it is so important to act from a state of love and compassion, right? Because love and compassion is the highest frequency vibratory state, and this is the vibration state of the universe. So being in that high vibratory state of love and compassion makes it easier for you to communicate with those high vibratory states of guidance, right? Number eight, taking time to understand how your psychic abilities work. Now, so often we fixate on how everyone else's psychic abilities are working and we are constantly comparing ourselves to others. The thing is, is that our psychic abilities are just as unique as we are. And so if we are putting all of our energy to compare our psychic abilities to others, then we are not taking the time to understand our unique approach to our own psychic abilities. So be the scientific observer. Take that time to observe your own psychic abilities and how your own psychic abilities work. The more that you understand your own psychic abilities, the more by your own understanding of it, by your own observation of it, they actually begin to develop. Isn't that cool? Number nine, trying to communicate. If you are not actively taking the time to try and communicate with your guides, how do you expect your guides to reach out with you? You need to be the first one to let your guides know that you are interested in receiving guidance from them. So open up that communication pathway, begin to communicate with them, let them know what you're wanting. The more that you do this, you'll find that they actually begin to communicate with you. But you need to be the one to start that communication process. Number. 10. Belief. Lack of belief is one of the strongest deterrents in your ability to develop your psychic senses. If you don't believe that you can develop your psychic senses or you don't even believe that you have them, then it is near impossible to develop them. So you need to really work on that belief. You need to work through that belief and get to the point that you begin to believe that these things are possible and that you actually can do this. Once you can do that, then through that belief alone, you will find that it is now possible. So work through your beliefs, work through your limiting ideas of what you think you can and cannot do. And once you do that, your abilities will open up and you will begin to develop your psychic senses. And don't forget, your psychic abilities are natural and innate to you as an energy being, right? So keep that in mind when you are working on your state of belief. Understand that this is an inherent and natural skill for you and so have faith and trust in that ability. Okay, so I hope that these 10 things have helped you. Make sure that you work on these a little bit every day and the more that you remove the obstacles to you developing your psychic abilities, the easier it will be for you to develop them. In the meantime, check out my video here on 10 meditation hacks that will begin to get you headed in the right direction. Anyway, thank you so very much for watching this video today. I hope you have a wonderful day.